now it's happening. <laughs> we're, we're episode 37, right? Yeah. All right. Woohoo. Welcome to episode 37 of the Georgie and Patty show. I am Georgie. I am Patty. And it is Thursday and we love Thursdays because Thursdays we get to interview a highly inspiring human um, who's doing great things in the world or we're curious about someone we want to talk to someone we think would bring value to um, our audience who we appreciate so much for showing up every day so just so you know i asked mike to come at around 9 40 to give us time to get set up and organized so he's not kind of like deer in headlights while we we do our intro stuff because sometimes it takes us a little bit of time and it's nice that um we're actually organized on time which is great so um i see there's a, a uh, question in the chat actually um have you created a document listing all shows so far with permission slips and quotes from each session? Oh, well. We no. were not talking about <laughs> that before we got on the call. Exactly. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that format, but I like it. I think that's yeah. a great idea. Thank you for the suggestion. It's really good. Um, I am totally behind on the quotes of the day for sure. Normally I was I was sort of on track with getting them posted every day and I'm behind now. And I started with a couple permission slips and, you know, that fell by the wayside. However, that's a really, really, really good idea. We will uh, get someone to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> More on that tomorrow. <laughs> More on that tomorrow, that's right. <laughs> um, but I do, I do, um, I really appreciate that the, the comments and things like that because you let us know the format that would make it easier for you to digest all the information or to be able to um, access it easily in the way that you want to access it. So we really, really appreciate getting your feedback um, because as we talk about quite often with, with um, helping you guys with your businesses, right? It is an experimentation. We're in experimentation here and we want to be able to give things to you in the way that you want them but the reality is we're kind of making it up as we go in our own head of here's what we think so we do our best to imagine what that would look like so when you actually give us the real life feedback then we can consider it <laughs> and go oh, okay it seems like a lot of people are saying they would like to see this or have it in this way so perfect and honestly it makes our life easier because we don't have to think about oh how should we do this Oh, they say they want it like that. Cool. Let's do it like that. Easy. No need to, uh, to fight the machine basically <laughs> is what, is what I think anyway. So yeah, okay. I'm just checking my, all my devices. I feel very, even though I only have the phone and the computer, but it feels very technologically ish. Hey, I, I'm imagining today. you, um, um, uh, on the enterprise, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. Oh, let me just <laughs> let me just switch to my other screen and have a moment. Oh, let's see. Check out the Facebook people. Hello, Facebook people. Sometimes I feel like I ignore them, so it's a little bit nice to give them give the Facebook people, the Facebook family, a little bit of a little bit of love today. Hi, Facebook people. Yes, exactly. Oh, they disappeared. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> scare them away yeah ah, don't talk to me go away go away no just kidding um oh i have a tablet nice Ooh. nice i have a phone <laughs> <laughs> phone and a laptop so yeah this is going to be a really awesome conversation today i i literally i was only about 60 percent through mike's book and i have like so many pages of notes it's crazy so i'm certain we won't get to all of it and i know it's going to be really really um beneficial and valuable and inspiring and all of those really cool 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 things this book is called believership which we'll talk about what does what does believership actually mean 
and it's funny, I, I, in my mind, I, I made up a definition of what it was until I actually read the book. And then I was like, oh, I really like it a lot more now. I get it. But I often think too, how interesting when we, we, I think we do that so much in our regular life, just make, make up meanings for things. And because it, it took me a few months to read the book when I first got it. And then I was like, oh, in my mind, walking around for a few months thinking, oh, I know what this means. I know what this means. I got it. I got it. Of course, I didn't have it. Not at all. So very, so many learnings, you know, so crazy. I keep thinking with uh, reviewing the, the Robin Sharma book of how often am I keeping my cup empty so that I can take in new information and how often am I walking around with the lid really screwed on quite tight <laughs> because I'm quite happy with all the contents inside. No need to add any more. It's just perfectly perfect. But man, yeah. I don't know if any of you guys do that, but I do it anyway. If you guys have any thoughts or questions before we get started too, before Mike gets here, please feel free to um, to ask them. Anything you have might have come up from the last few shows this week, or um, I know there's some people who watch the replays and post questions in, in our group after, which we do, we do get to those questions, but if anything's come up, please feel free to, um, to ask while we are waiting for, waiting for Mike to get here, which is awesome. I feel like I'm so impatient. I'm like, come on, I want to get this conversation started. I don't think an hour is enough time. I have so much I want to say and ask, but we will make it happen within, within the time frame. That's for sure. Um, geez, everyone's so quiet. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Looking forward to this interview. Yep, me too. Me too. Oh, just this rainy morning. I don't see rain. We can always bring him back again. <laughs> he hasn't yes. even been here yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, so you already know they're gonna like it. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> he was he was here for a minute. <laughs> oh, that's true. I guess officially we are bringing him back. We're bringing was, him back. That's right. <laughs> he was here a little while ago. Yeah, it's just nine forty-three. Where is he? <laughs> no, okay. I'm just gonna let me just check my phone. Let me check my phone. You know, time zone differences and all that good stuff. Um, do 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 do. Um, let me just check. Make sure I have no messages and all my technologicals. Um, just thinking 10 o'clock. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Oh, yay. Yay. <laughs> So, uh, we have a question about NLP training. Can you tell us how that it's helped you in your life? Oh, man. Yep. So, I started my NLP, I took my first NLP course in 2003. Um, and at the time, I didn't even know what NLP was. Like, I was just looking for something because I wanted to, to do something um, better in the world, to make a bigger difference in the world. The person I reached out to, I knew she did that kind of thing, um, and she happened to have a course coming up, and she's, I was like, yeah, I'm in. So when I, I can remember when I first went into NLP, so I was in this space of, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to make a bigger difference. I wasn't super happy in my relationship either. At the time, I was still with my kid's dad, and of course, I thought everything was his fault. <laughs> he could only change. It'd be so much better. Um, and what, when one of the first days of our class, you know, she's asking, you know, what do you want your outcomes to be? If you could have anything you wanted, what would, would you want that to be? So we had our first day. And at the end of the day, I was like, what I would really want is I want that relationship to work. I want a really great relationship with my kid's dad because, you know, we're a family. So 
that was one of the biggest, and I mean, I'm not with him now, but um, it really made a big difference in our relationship for sure. And I think it also changed how we were able to navigate our relationship. And then when that relationship ended, how we were able to continue to parent our children together, which I think made, made a really, really big difference because we, I mean, from day one, the day one of breakup, um, we still did birthdays together. We still did Christmases together. We still had family meetings for how we were going to do things. So, so those NLP skills, uh, I'm 100% certain for me, allowed me to show up differently and to be able to create that environment, which was really, really, really important for me. Um, some of the things that I loved NL about NLP in the beginning were those presuppositions or like those beliefs of excellence that I, that I shared before, you know, like people are always doing the best that they can. Um, I am 100% responsible for my results. So taking that self-responsibility was probably one of the biggest lessons I got from NLP and what is my part? Because if I can take even even if it's only like a 1% part in anything that happens in my life, it, I can come from an empowering place and I can show up differently. And there, there's something, there's something in that, that, that is just really, really beneficial for me. Um, the other one, the meaning of communication is the response I get. That's been a massive one because again, I think it comes down to that ownership piece where I can look at, Oh, I am responsible for everything I'm doing. So if the response I'm getting from someone isn't what I intended, I can do something differently. It doesn't matter what they do, but, but I can. Um, the other things with NLP has allowed me to communicate better with people for sure. Um, I think to be able to recognize where people are at and how can I communicate with them in the way they want to be communicated with you know, what, what can I, how can I show up with a little more compassion, a little more empathy? What kind of questions can I ask to be able to get into someone else's world? The thing I shared on the, one of the shows about um, those kind of perceptual positions or whatever, I'm in my own, I'm seeing things through my filter. Now let me see it through their world. And now let me be that observer kind of person gives me a whole new perspective because I know that when I can shift the perspective, I can see things differently and see things in a way that I might not have seen them before, which of course changes how we communicate with people um, and makes it easier. But I think yeah, there's just so many things. And I realized that how much of it I use just in my daily life and not just in like in my business, but, but integrating those things and they really become a way of how I operate in the world. So how I think, um, the questions I ask, recognizing that um, I do have choice, you know, and I am responsible for that. And even when I'm going through things that are, that are sucky and I kind of lose my way a little bit and I'm challenged to move through things, I'm, I'm still holding those beliefs. So I know, I know I will come out the other side. I know there's a way for, for me to do this and it just takes some time. Um, I think one of like, like if I think of some of the more pivotal moments in my life, I guess, like I, I had one point that um, this is like get all these ridiculous stories that I'm like talking about, but I will because I think it makes the point. But um, so, so like I had, I had a boyfriend who decided one night to, to physically assault me. And I can remember when the next day, um, cause I wasn't home and I ended up coming home. And I can remember in the middle of the night I woke up super scared because I thought I heard his car outside. So I, I can remember working, I can feel that visceral feeling of being like, oh my God, like, and I can, I can remember sitting up and going, okay, Georgie, you have a choice right now. You can either decide to be scared and give your power away, or you can own this. You can bring it back and you get, you get to decide. And I know that comes from NLP, like literally being able to disassociate myself enough to recognize what was going on and then to say what are you going to do here you get to choose i can sit here and i can be afraid and i can jump every two minutes and i can do all of that stuff or i can own my own myself and again i was like okay 
I, that's right. I choose not to give that power away. I choose to keep it for, for me and then to work through that. You know, so I get up, I look outside, make sure, okay, what are my options? If he's out there, what do I do? But, but it was such a defining moment where, you know, I can keep it or I can give it away. And the only, the only way someone can take my power is if I give it to them. So, so many, like I say, it's, it's such a thing that I use in all areas. It's not, it's definitely in everything I teach in business for sure, guaranteed. Um, but yeah, in, ev in everything. And I think it's come from the integration of it. You know, like it literally becomes through practice. And I think that's why I'm such a big proponent of, of implementation is because I can really, really take it on. Um, but for me, NLP has been huge. And I don't even use all of it for sure. I found the pieces that work for me, integrated in my life, and those pieces I use all the time. So, yeah, hopefully that's, that's helpful. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting when you're talking about the um, um, uh, seeing the different perspective, right? Seeing it from someone else's eyes and as the observer. And it's like, I'd never associated that with being um, an NLP um, kind of a thing, but that ability to be able to put yourself into your potential client's shoes is everything in marketing. It is everything. <laughs> Like it is everything that we're talking about. It's like, if you can develop that ability, all of a sudden, everything becomes clearer. What do I say? What do I do? How do I put this out there? It's, it's like, if you're able to evaluate what you're doing by sitting in the shoes of the person that, on the receiving end, like yeah. to really and truly do that. It's, it's, it's a superpower. Exactly. And I think, you know, NLP is actually a collection of um, models for excellence. So I really believe they, what they did is they did this, a study of excellence with all these different people, right? Like Milton Erickson, Virginia Satir, Fritz Perl, like all of these different people. So I'm certain these techniques exist outside of NLP. I'm sure they probably do, you know, it's, it's just that they did the study and the research and then were able to put it all together. What were the best things that made the biggest difference in communication and being able to show up in excellence? And they put it in this one box, you know, that they've called NLP, which is really based on the patterns that we're running, the languaging that we're using, why we do what we do, how we do what we do. How is, how is this brain working and filtering information? And then how can we break all those pieces down and be able to use it kind of like this little magic code or program and then change pieces when we're not getting the results that we want or we're not showing up in the way that we want to show up. So I do believe it's, it's really, really powerful. I do believe, you know, also who teaches you it matters, I think. I think I was very fortunate. Um, my instructor was Lynn Robinson from the Robinson Group. She is incredible. And I think what makes her really a fantastic teacher of this is she lives it. It's who she is. She's, she, this is how she shows up. So it's not like it's something that she learned and then she thought she would teach it. It's something that, that she embodies, you know, and she, she walks her talk and she shows, she shows up with it. So I think that was the other piece of it. And she just really resonated with me. She also has a lot of other training that she brings into it, you know, a little, some of the more spiritual type of, of things that I think also has an undercurrent to making her really effective at, um, at teaching it and sharing it. So yeah, really, really, really cool. Maybe we'll have her on our show one day too. That would be a good conversation as well. <laughs> we got a but yes. Yes. For that. <laughs> yeah. She, she is. She's, you know, it was, it was, she is definitely one of, um, one of the special people in my life. One of the, one of the mentors for me, for sure. And I can remember I was doing a, asked to give a talk. I was keynoting at an event and I said, Oh yeah, I'd love to. And then when I looked at the other speaker, she was a speaker and I just about lost my shit literally. Cause I was like, Oh my God, how, how can, I don't know if I can go on and, t and talk like after her, you know, but it was, it was really, it was cool. And of course she was amazing. Um, 
but it's literally one of those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. Can I do that? Eek. Just checking my phone because, you know, it's like almost 10. Um, but thank you for the question because I could, that's also something I could talk about like literally um, all day long. Ooh, oh, I got a you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Tell us about your book. What'd you learn from writing the book? Look at this. I happen to have it right beside me. <laughs> and I learned from writing the book. Oh, let, where where could I begin? Um, I'll start with the fact that um, oh, <laughs> I'll save that question for another day. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. Did I make it on the right day? You did. You are the right yes. day. Welcome. <laughs> exactly. Correct. That's good. Yes, you are in the right day, the right room, the right time. It's perfect. Happy to see both of you. Thank you for having me today. Oh, so excited to have you here. So, so, so excited. Welcome. I almost gave him the whole story about you before you got here, but I stopped, so it's good. <laughs> so because I love it so you can experience it too and I haven't even shared our quote of the day because I got a quote from your book that I want to share oh wow yeah dude your book is amazing oh Georgie thank you you would not believe the pages and pages and pages of notes I have yay I would love to have you share that with me I will don't you worry <laughs> <laughs> okay so my quote of the day is um when our hearts and minds are connected in purpose, and when we honor the commitment to others in our relationships, each person excels. I love that. I think for so many different reasons. Um, and I think, you know, with the work and I, the work that Patty and I do, it's so much based on relationships and humans, yeah. you know, which is why I think one of the reasons I super connected with your message. Um, that, that you share with the humans first and everything. So, so good. But, okay. so I thought I will, I'll now I'll give you guys the official introduction of, <laughs> of my version, my version of Mike. Everyone always gets the my version of somebody as opposed to the official version, so. <laughs> I love the my version. Yeah. I think that's always the best way to go. <laughs> so that's what they get. So um, Mike is an author of the book Believership, which we're definitely going to talk about today. Um, he is also the founder of something called the Humans First Club, which we're also going to talk about today, which is amazing. Um, and so how I first came across Mike was through LinkedIn. I saw some of your stuff on LinkedIn and the Humans First um, Club in space. Right. And like I typically do, I'm like, I need to know more. Hey, Mike, my name is Georgie. Love what you're doing. Can we get on a call? <laughs> so we did. Yeah. And the cool thing about um, your stuff and you actually was, and I, I had mentioned this when we talked before, is that I was at a point where I kind of lost, I'd lost my faith in humanity a bit. You know, I was kind of going through a spot and I was like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people do just suck. And maybe, you know, maybe, maybe that's really true. Maybe all those people who have told me I've been living in this fantasy bubble and you trust people too much and people are good and the world is amazing. Maybe, maybe I was wrong. And then I, so I was searching, I wanted to basically re up my belief, you know, and I came across your, your work, your group, your people. And I was like, oh, I found my people. <laughs> they exist. I was just in the wrong bubble. Okay. <laughs> you know, which then of course I reached out to you and we had a call that was so amazing. And you said something to me on that call, which I'm not even sure you're aware that you said it to me or the impact that it had on me. And I had mentioned that, that I was like, Oh, kind of lost my face. Then we kept talking and kept talking mm -hmm. and you came back around and you said, you asked me, you said, so well, how are you doing now? And I said, Oh, Oh, I'm good. I'm pretty good right now. And I explained a little bit and you, you looked at me through the screen and this makes me so emotional, just so crazy. We don't cry on our show, but anyway, you know, and you looked at me through the screen and you said, you know, you said, my heart, my heart hurts for the pain that you went through. And I felt it 
and I, it was it was literally one of the biggest healing moments for me um, <laughs> um because you were you were actually in the space with me so and I, I haven't shared this with you but I appreciated that moment so 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 much um and I, I really do believe it was kind of that last little piece that I needed because I'm like like I just I felt like I mattered like I was like in person I've been talking to for half an hour that I met on LinkedIn you know what I mean but yeah. I think it's it's such a tribute to we often don't know the impact we make on people. And when we show up as human beings, amazing things can happen. So I wanted to share that and thank you for that moment. Um, and it, I think it's, it just confirmed my reason for wanting to reach out to you. Like, oh, okay, everything's back into place. I love people, people are awesome. <laughs> I know they're good. So, so thank you for showing up in the way that you show up in the world. Um, for sure. So that's kind of my, my intro into, into you. <laughs> um, I hope nobody ever reads my bio again. And <laughs> they start with something like that, Georgie, um, because I'm, I'm right there with you again. Right. And so when I see the emotions rise, you know, they rise in me also. And we love to wor use words like empathy listening, understanding, compassion. Um, and they're beautiful words, but isn't it better when we feel it? Um, totally. And, and, and I think oftentimes we miss that, that it, it's, it's all this intellectual exercise and that's not where all this stuff exists, right? It's much lower. Exactly. Um, you know, when we find ourselves more aware of the the pump um i i think better things happen right and you know you talk about losing your 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 place or your belief and and like where are we going on this human journey and yeah. and you know i think many of us find ourselves in the hole sometimes and you know the first rule of holes is stop digging I love that in your book, by the way. I was like, yes, just stop digging. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the, the mission is, is to climb back up to the surface. And when we get there, we have a responsibility then to lift others to the surface as well. And somehow we miss that. Like, that's not what we are trained right? It, it, it's like climb over those other people and get yourself to the surface. And then, you know, you're the conqueror. It's like king of the hill kind of thing. And that's, that doesn't come from the heart. That no. is somehow um, what is rewarded. I think that, you know, we've, we've, we've turned um, in a direction that wasn't sustainable or desirable. And that's where I believe we can do better. And what I love about, you know, when we move from the head to the heart or we connect them, right? It's, it's not one or the other. It, you know, like this is a beautiful system that was put together that we get to operate with. And, you know, our gut, our soul, our heart, our head, they're all, they're, they're supposed to work together. Exactly. And one is not supposed to lead. Um, but the beautiful thing about, understanding where we are from from a heart base and when we operate that way is it continues to pump right so you can't empty the cup from the heart we can you know fill our head with junk we can we can spew out our thoughts and and our interpretations and our pontifications but when we're sharing emotions when we're really um connecting with people that's an that's an ever flowing river, right? We, you know, we can empty that cup because it's always refilling. And and, um, man, it takes like for me, it takes some of us a long time to really learn that, <laughs> and then start acting on it. And that's why the compliments you said about humans first and the book is, it feels good to be in a place to act on it, but then. Um, 
make it my mission to really lift others, right? And, and, and help people out of that hole because I know I can climb out. Yeah. Um, and, and so it feels better to bring everyone else, um, you know, al- along that journey. It's so good. And, you know, I, what I found interesting in your book and what I think, of, which is about you too, is as I was reading the book and, you, you know, so he talks about early and how you started working in corporate and having different jobs and things like that. But what I really loved was how, when you were in a position within your work, if it didn't align with your beliefs and you knew that this, you left, it was like, nope. Like, and I thought, and you, it seems like you, you did that from very early. Like it was just kind of this core thing in you that was like, and it, if this, and it was always around people. If people aren't being treated well, if the relationships aren't being, this is not the person I want to be. This is not who I want to be around. I don't aspire to be that. I'm out. And in really like lucrative positions. So would you say you've had that kind of, like forever so there's some rebellion in there right it's it's um what i what i think you know early on before i was probably you know as as attuned as i am to to who i am and and um you know having a a better connection to the whole system um I think that that rebellion did play into it a a lot. Like early on, it was probably a little bit of resistance to authority. But one common thing is I don't believe it's anybody's job or right or um, um, I don't think anybody is entitled enough to tell another person who they're supposed to be. And, and I think from a very early age, we, we miss that, um, you know, from, from walking the halls in middle school and, and finding the right click to associate with, um, you know, there's that push, you're an outsider, you have to become like us. So we dress the same, we, we wear our hair the same, we, we, you know, take on the same dialogue, the same words and, and sometimes even we take on the same meanness or judgment of others, even though that doesn't suit us or feel right. And then we see that kind of, you know, escalate into business. We, we get out, we join the company and they say, this is our culture and, you know, you need to assimilate to it. Um, right. You, like think of onboarding experiences when we come into a company and they say, you know, these are all the systems. This is how it works. These are the people, these, you know, are, our processes and they kind of get you aligned to go succeed in your job. And then they pull you aside and say, you know, that person, here's the real thing with them. And this group, you have to be careful of that. And, and, you know, I mean, you get the systems and then you get all this inside stuff kind of telling you who to align with and who not to align with, who to have relationships and not have relationships. So there's all this, you know, kind of preset, assimilation and and I always resisted that it it um, I got to know people and once I understood their perspective many of them were really wonderful people that also were struggling with the assimilation approach and so it was always amazing how quickly we'll throw people out to the fringes and and for me I, like I knew I could go do the work I knew that I could create things. I knew that I could do business. I knew that I could sell. Um, and it was all about relationships and engaging with people. And that's, that's why I knew I could continue to do it because that was the constant. Um, and so I would step away if I didn't believe in the vision or the mission or in sometimes the service or product. Yeah. Um, and it was hard and there's pain in doing that. Um, but it, it served me right because I'm, you know, I think, you know, pretty soulfully healthy person at, at this stage. <laughs> um, yeah. so that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, are we, are, you know, is it a journey to become soulful or stuff full? 
I think that, you know, there's, there's that choice we make at different junctures in our life. And, and, um, you know, the soulful, um, at this age, I will tell you is, is, um, probably a lot more valuable than the stuff full. Totally. <laughs> and I think we're, we're starting to see that now, even with like the environment that we're in right now with the COVID thing, which I think has just magnified how, where we have put our attention and we're starting to get maybe a view of the things that do really matter to us. And maybe it's not all the stuff and the ambition and all those things, but when we're almost forced to slow down and really take inventory of what is it that, that I really care about? What is it that really, really matters to me? And I think we do start to kind of recognize, oh, it's the people in my life. It's the relationships that I have. It's the person I'm becoming. Yeah, you know, it's that. it's really cool. Patty, what do you think about having this goofball on your show? <laughs> I th I think I want to. Uh, Georgie has a head start on me. I want to know, like, what is this human's first thing? Ah, yes. Um, as I jumped off of my fifth merger and acquisition, which was four years ago now, and I had moved out to Seattle. I took an apartment in Seattle for two years, a Chinese company bought an American company and, and I went out there to integrate them, but basically ended up running two different entities through this transition. And um, I came back and, and I was looking for what was next in my life. And I, so I, I launched into consulting really out of necessity until um, whatever was next came along. And um, I did a deep exploration exploration of what happened during those five mergers and acquisitions. Why did those teams that I inherited exceed, you know, exceed their goals and meet their expectations and really become a pretty happy group of people? So um, we were both fulfilled and successful. And somebody asked me, why is that? Why, you know, why were you able to do that five different times? And I didn't really have an answer. I, um, I knew I was there each time, but so I went through a process of discovery and sent out large packets to a wide group of people, bosses, people that worked for me, um, partners, clients, and got a lot of feedback of what was their experience like during that time? How did they experience me? And those principles, what I learned through that self-discovery or that research is um, those became the kind of foundations to what I built my, my teaching programs and my consulting programs around. So it was around high achieving teams. And as I was out working with companies all over the country, I was realizing that these teams aren't high achieving. They're, they're barely high functioning. And there was so much going on. We started digging into what was their experience, what happened because of them, that um, I knew that we were in trouble. Like we were in a state of, of, of being in business that wasn't, um, it wasn't really serving anybody. And so then I started doing a bunch of other research and reading books and finding out really that this is, a large problem. We have a lot of research backing it. And, and so then it was really just taking it further and saying, what's going on with this? So a group of us got together. We were kind of doing similar work, had similar beliefs. And we got a group of people together in a room um, at the World Trade Center in New York City, um, October of 2018. With a simple, instead of bringing programs and doing the speaker thing and following traditional paths, which I don't really enjoy traditional paths, I like to invent new. <laughs> we just got a bunch of people in the room and said, what's it like to be human in the workplace today? We infused some ideas at the beginning and then got everybody into dialogue. And through the planning of that, people started raising their hands in other cities. And I just said, yes. And um, kind of self-sustaining. There was no financial goal to it. It was really just a way to, can we gather people, hear their experiences, and be there for each other. 
And um, so, you know, some ideas and parameters are put around that, but we've had 13 events now across the U S and one over in London. And then we kicked off some weekly calls and started bringing together people, you know, with in that same idea on zoom uh, a little over a year ago. And people started coming from all over the world. We would have these calls and we would have five continents, 12 different countries, um, people on the calls. And um, that just kept accelerating. So all of a sudden this consortium or this network of people was, was built organically that, um, you know, is thousands of people strong and, and, um, We'll continue to listen to where people need to go, um, take, take the, the urging from others as to, you know, what's next. And so we've gone from just having these place, these safe spaces where people can come together and learn and share and connect um, at a deep level to now we'll move into more action, into some consulting programs and teaching programs and, and other pieces to that. And then we're expanding it out to try to bring other large organizations that have the similar ideals to pull some of the organizations together. So um, instead of waiting for it to happen, I've, I've decided that perhaps I need to be the needle and thread and start weaving that fabric. And, um, I'm silly enough to try. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how it became over the last year and a half and how we're envisioning what the future looks like. So great. So I think you're on to something so amazing. Like I think anytime, well, even the name says it all really, like how do we bring more humanity and, and humanness into, you know, corporations, work, our business, all of those things where we, we treat people like people. Yes. You know, I think it's, it's neat. You know, amazingly, uh, Georgie, you know, each of us reaches a point or at several times in our life, we reach a point where we do feel a little bit stuck. And instead of, gosh, Mike has a problem, let's just dis Mike, right? <laughs> dismiss Mike and bring somebody in who, you know, is, is fresh and has the energy. I have no idea what his trauma is, but I certainly don't want them dragging it through the door instead of saying, Hey, Mike, you're a valuable part of our group here. Um, how can I help get you through that moment? Exactly. You know, we, we, we build people up around us and we advance together and there's now greater connectivity and more depth to the relationship. And for some reason in business, we've been taught to leave all of that at the door which yeah. I never understood. It's, you know, why do you want just a part of me when I'm willing to, to, to bring it all? <laughs> exactly. So maybe to give people the definition of believership. Yeah. Believership. I call it the superpower beyond leadership because I think that we've built these containers are these, these false fables of what a leader is, right? Basically it's, you know, it's, it's a man that can, you know, bring his country together and go cross another border and win a war. That's, that's it's kind of what it's all built on. And, and those fables no longer serve us, right? The leaders, the people we follow are those that are amongst us. Um, and it's not the person in the highest authority. It's those that are there for us, that help us out. It's that friend we go to. Um, and those relationships build naturally. And, and I think that um, we've built the storylines around leaders of countries, leaders of companies. And if we really strip away those false containers, we understand that the reason they were successful is people believed in them. They believed in the vision or the mission, they believed in the person or the product. And so they willfully attached to that person, that vision, that mission, and they committed 
And it was all of those people together that made it happen. It was success was born from the belief of, of a group of people together, not one commander, you know, shouting controls from the top of the hill. That that just is not what actually happens. And and when we look at some of the most successful leaders that get called out often, right? Steve Jobs was an asshole. It's written. There's movies out there. People say that he, you know, abandoned his family, he denied this. He was, you know, pretty aggressive and and in your face as a as a human being in meetings. But people believed in his vision, and they committed, and together they did some wonderful things. So in that sense, he was a great leader because people believed. It wasn't because he had this, you know, container of traits and characteristics that we want to, you know, now write into a job description and, and try to replicate. Um, he was an outlier. He was a unique individual. So the, the book is, let's find that innate greatness in each person and allow the best among us to rise into leadership and stop selecting those that fit some idyllic mold, right? We mold people into leaders. It's like, well, let's not do that. That doesn't, let's let them just become their best person and not mold them to be something else. Um, and then I think of those molds like, you know, a cookie cutter mold, right? So it's gonna be this very square, shaped thing, you know, pretty much replicating a man, a gingerbread man, cookie cutter. Um, there's not much room for breasts or hips or, you know, and then somehow over time, we've decided to only roll out, you know, sugar cookie dough. <laughs> so we're, we're, and that's what, those are the cookies that we're saying that's, that's leadership and we know better. There's many flavors, there's many different types and, and shapes and spice of dough and, and there's many shapes of, the, of, the, um, of a leader. It's not cookie cutter. Um, that's the belief that I believe we have the opportunity to just break out of those containers and truly allow the best among us to rise um, and start following the, or, you know, Appoint the leaders being the ones that people are already following. Not tell everybody to follow the one that nobody would do naturally. Um, that's a big mistake we've made. Um, that's what I've seen in my career and, and in all the research I've done. I, I, I believe we've, um, we've missed the real common denominator. And that's that others believed. Exactly. You know, I think I saw a definition. I think Simon Sinek actually said it where he said, you know, a leader is actually someone who has followers. It's not, it's not your rank that you have. It's actually someone who, you know, they believe what you believe and they want to be a part of your mission. And yeah. so they have joined you in, in what you're doing, you know, and it's, and the leader is the person who cares about his people. You know, and you say this so greatly in the book where you talk about, you know, really it's about getting to know the people and what are their dreams and what are, where, where are they in their kind of personal development growth and how can they become better humans and your mission is allowing them to step into that. So by being part of whatever you're doing, their belief in that, they are able to grow and expand and reach their dreams and their potential, yeah. you know? And I'm like, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about, you know? And I, we can do that in business and whether you have a corporation, whether like most of us here on the call are, are solo business people, you yeah. know? And we can do that in our lives, in our families. Like imagine if we treat our children like that, our parents like that, hey, What's really important to you? What, where do you want to go? What's your kind of method for growth of how you see your life happening and how can we support you to do that within this container? Yes. Yes. For the time that we have together, because, you know, we're not assigned to a, a role in a position yeah. in a company for life, right? It, no. Even if we want to be, it's not available. 
Um, exactly. And so for our time together, how can we achieve our objectives, which are absolutely necessary, right? Like businesses need to exist and, and succeed. Um, that's why overachievement on goals was always a part of my experience. Yeah. Um, but we can do much more than that because you, we each have the ability to become fulfilled. So that understanding of, you know, how does this attach to your life mission? And so that's, you know, once you attach that, your goals to my goals, um, you know, we're kind of, we're in stride together. Good things are going to happen. Exactly. And yeah. I think when you approach it like that too, then when, when one person does outgrow it or they're moving on to something different, it's actually more of a celebration. It's more right. of like, hey, this is awesome. This isn't the place for you anymore. How great is that? Go, you know, do what you need to do. Lift other people up. Take this experience as you move and grow. Yes. Instead of being like trying to stifle people and hold them in or, you know, and even if it comes down to, um, you know, to having to let someone go. Right. But doing that in a really kind and human way, because it's just not a right fit, maybe that's serving them either. Right. And being able to actually help set them up for something that might be more beneficial for them instead of just like, sorry, see ya. But actually, I think you might be better over here. I even know someone that I think could really benefit from what you have and what you believe in your skill set and what you're doing, you know, instead of kind of making this negative thing out of it, but really almost respectful of ourselves and the pe the other person. So well stated, Georgie. And, you know, play that out um, in, in our lives for a second and, and just think of that is the graciousness, that is the, the care and the compassion, the empathy to say, you know, where can we get you to help you succeed? Um, yeah. Because, you know, if, if performance isn't there, then they're probably seeing it or feeling it more than the one that's assessing. And so how do we help people move into a successful state? I, you know, that is the compassionate and caring approach to take. And it totally flips the, the coin on, on, on that situation. You know, and I also think when, when you say about, you know, when people grow and, and succeed and, and then perhaps, you know, now that they have their wings, they, they, they fly away. How wonderful that is, right? Everybody's in a great place when that happens. And yes, there's, you know, the remorse of separation, but it's for a good reason. And, and, and that conflict we have in our, in our lives of raising families or, or going to work and having work, you know, imagine the, the work environment is set up with mentality. If we were to match it against the home environment, we would have children and we would be very angry if they had left the house, um, you know, before they're 50 years old. You, st you need to stay home. You can never leave. Do what you're told. Do not be, you know, do not grow. Do not find your independence. Don't move on. Somehow in business, we think that's the case. <laughs> it's just <laughs> not life. It's not real. It's not a reasonable expectation. Conversely, we do celebrate when, you know, children grow and they achieve and they, you know, become self-sustaining adults and they and they move on and they create lives for themselves I, you know one thing that is natural symmetry is completely blocked or even discouraged in the other environment and it's just illogical totally I actually love that in your in your book too where you talk about I literally I love like seriously I have so many notes I have to even reread it because I'm like oh my gosh there's so much good stuff in here um like the the change is hard belief yeah and how that's like why do we even hold that and that when we look at things how in nature even because I, and I love when things relate to nature change is inevitable and it's like this rhythm that we go through right and, you know and I was reading I was like 
oh yeah, what if we actually took that on? Yes, it's a process and yes, there will be challenges and those challenges being, being bring growth, but what if it's not hard? You know, where we, because often I think when we believe change is hard, it also, we kind of creates a bit of resistance because we're like, <gasps> maybe I don't want to do that hard thing, uh, you know? Right. Yeah. Isn't that, and I, I think that, you know, one of the differences is when change is understood and chosen and it's chosen yes. as part of our growth, it's natural that way, um, rather than being forced on us. And in, you know, a bureaucratic um, environment, change is often forced without reason. Um, either, you know, we, we aren't given the understanding to make that good choice um, or it's not a good choice. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and so then we always have the freedom to choose, right? And, and, and I think, you know, I mean, choice is the greatest freedom and that's where we can help people select because oftentimes if it's not right for them, they'll select themselves out. Um, yeah. We don't have to force everything. Um, and, and somehow there's this almost maniacal um, satisfaction, I think, when, when there's that kind of control trigger. And, yeah. and you know, like, you know, let's just move everybody through the world in a remote control, you know, mindset. And that, that's not reality. People will make good choices when we make them available. Exactly. And I think holding that people are able to do that. Right. Right. You know, like it's, oh, I see we have a question in the chat box. I don't want to ignore them. Um, okay. Here's a question for you. Uh, will humanity pivot towards this trend during this global paradigm shift? I think awareness is growing. I think awareness of a new possibility is growing that, um, there has been a, a large undertow, I believe, for some time. And that's why even the Humans First movement could, could come about, is there were people that were hungry for that type of forum, that type of discussion. So it, it, I don't think the appetite has needed to be created, but needed to be answered. Um, along that question, I think the answer is yes, but I still think it's early. I, th I think that um, wide adoption of more enlightened programs, more enlightened leadership will come. I think that this you know, tragic situation we're in now, I'm going to use a strong word, um, will be a catalyst to speed it up. Um, but I do believe that since the path we are on is neither desirable or, or sustainable, that it will change. I think this reflection period, this reset, gives us an opportunity to look at what is important, um, how we treat people in our relationships are actually the great value that we have when we can't um, go out and, and mask or hide or attain all the things that, that we used to, that I think we look inward and, and, I, and I hope, my great hope is that it will, it will take hold and stay with us and help us make better choices. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah, I'll let you ask questions if you want, Patty, before I just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have another one in here, too. I actually, I actually, I do have a question. Yes. yes. Um, we, uh, Georgie and I, uh, tend to attract uh, people to us that uh, do not fit into that uh, white sugar cookie, um, uh, cookie cutter mold kind of a thing, in, even in our little itty, itty bitty little businesses. It's what advice do you have for people who want to, um, to put themselves out in the world? And it is kind of a leadership role to run your own, your own business. And Absolutely. To, um, what advice do you have when you don't fit the mold? Um. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
I'm I'm going to I'm going to get to the answer. Will you allow me a little leeway to get there, Patty? Yeah. Because I think it's a really important question. And 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 I have to say that I've always felt a bit of a misfit, even though I don't look like a misfit. Um, I don't, you know, talk like a misfit. I was an athlete, you know, I got to do business. Um, I could find myself comfortably in circles, but it wasn't always comfortable. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't think anybody goes through so many changes like I did if they truly feel like, you know, they're one of the crowd, right? It, like somebody called me one day, they said, Mike, you know, this is wonderful, all these things you've done, but, you know, you really look like a job hopper. And I thought, job hopper, that's for underachievers. I, this is my fourth career. <laughs> like, hey, <I> career hop. <laughs> Forget job hopping. Um, so it was really interesting. I, um, you know, when everything shut down, so the eight events that I was speaking or doing workshops or, you know, humans first events, they all got canceled when this thing hit. Right. So coming into March. And so through June, everything's wiped out and it's, it's a clean slate. What do we do now? And instead of trying to replace all of that online, I thought I have to invent or create something new and, and put a new challenge out there. So just um, on April 30th, two weeks ago, I, I, I did an all day, 10 hours. We had 22 speakers in half hour sessions right after one another. And um, at the end of that, Mark LeBusque from Australia, who was with me at the first ever Humans First event in New York City, he called us out as misfits. And he said, Mike, look at this. Like what you've created over time is, is uh, you know, it is the land of misfit toys, right? It is all of these people that have kind of always been outliers, but know that there's a better way. And I tell that story coming into the answer, Patty, because we know better. Right, we, we, we know that what's inside of us is good enough. We know that what's inside of us makes us worthy. And our value to share that out with um, the groups that, that, uh, that attract to us, those of us that find each other, even out on the periphery, it's important work. And I think what happens is sometimes when we're not in the mainstream or we haven't acquiesced to the, to the, you know, to the yellow brick road and um, we into that mainstream, we think that somehow we are misfits. And in reality, those that lost or gave up their identity to be part of that mainstream they're at a deficit. So when we hold our richness, when we hold that self-belief enough to say, I am not going to surrender my soul to get into the main crowd. I say that's beautiful. So the advice is we need each other to support each other and then do the work to regain that worthiness and, and change our belief that acquiescing to the mainstream to, f to sacrifice our way into the most um, common denominator is, is just not the fulfilling path. It, it's not the soulful life that we choose to lead. Um, so I think embracing our uniqueness is, is actually the greatest gift we can share out with the world. And what I'll say is when we know our uniqueness and we start to share it out with the world, it's needed. We find that it's needed. Um, becoming a smaller part of a bigger engine isn't necessarily what will allow us to, to shine and grow and um, keep that smile on our face. So true. It's, it's, you fit so well here, I have to say. <laughs> you know, it just, it, 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 Patty has a book. Her book is called The U Shape Business. And it's all about, you know, bringing who you, you your you -ness, And that's what helps you stand apart. That's what makes you, you know, you can have a million coaches in a room, 
they're not going to be the same as long as you embrace who you are because it's you it, that's what sets you apart is your you it's your you-ness you know yes like it's so so cool and it's so funny that you bring up mark because i was watching i watched mark on the rally day and i'm like i love this guy connect on linkedin hi i really loved your thing da, 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 da. and i was like oh i want to go buy your book he goes oh make sure you buy the first one first because they actually go in order i'm like okay so i'm reading his human book right now and then i'm like okay i'll let you know what i think but it's these you know these conversations that that happen when we just i think there's a there's a connection that happens energetically or whatever you know so it's really it's just really interesting to me <laughs> That's so fun. I love that you connected with, with Mark. Um, and his books are, I mean, they're so straightforward. And, and, and he's just a very, very real person. But he's also strong, right? He's a provocateur. Yeah. You know, he, um, he also has the belief that we can help people by going in and removing a lot of the garbage that, you know, we're surrounded with. And I'm not saying in a minimalist sense, I'm saying in an ideology of what it takes to fit in and, and you know, play business, yeah. right? It's like, there's people who have jobs and, you know, even degrees and they've been trained to create complexity so they can keep their jobs. <laughs> we, like, we, we don't need all of that. Like business isn't that hard. Exactly. <laughs> And uh, oh. <laughs> so we have a chance to, you know, when we elevate people into their great skills, natural talents and gifts. Um, I think, you know, as I say in the book also that given the opportunity, people will amaze us. Yes. And that's kind of always been the case. And we see that in, we see that in the arts we see that with extraordinary painting and writing and, and um, you know, we see that in music. We admire that in sports. So all of those outliers are what we focus on so much when it's not in a business sense. And then businesses try to say, I want all my people to be like those great artists and athletes and everything else. And it's like, well, then, you know, stop disallowing it. <laughs> exactly exactly i often talk about that we, we on one of our shows we were, we were talking about you know when we're having say sales conversations with people you know and i'm like imagine that actually this person in front of you is this magical being from a new universe that you know nothing about and so you show up with this curiosity to learn all you can about this person and what is the magic that's inside of them? What is the, the valuable gifts that they possess? You know, and so come with that completely open mind of knowing nothing except curiosity. And like, I'm like, imagine if we approach every person we meet like that, like, oh my gosh, I know you're magical and I know you have something super cool in you and something really great to share with the world. And so I want to explore and discover and, and find, find what that is. Yes. Like, yeah. It's, it's and, so and fun. Isn't it fun? I, I love that. And, and that like that curiosity is, is huge, Georgie. And, you know, imagine if at the end of that conversation, somebody just goes, man, you're so weird. And the right response is, thank you. Exactly. It's like, it's so, so true. About that. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I know, right? Isn't it awesome? You know, that's what I think when talking to people, you know, people will be like, oh, I, I've been actually keeping kind of some screenshots or whatever of messages I actually send to people, like on mm -hmm. LinkedIn and reaching out. And I was telling Patty, um, so someone connected last night. I always go to their profile, have a look, send them a message, find something that I like or whatever. And this was a pretty corporate-y looking kind of coachy kind of guy or whatever. So I was like, oh, I really like blah, blah, whatever it was. And, and then he responded back. He's like, he goes, oh, he goes, you just put the biggest smile on my face. Yeah. And I was like, oh, thanks. Hearts, flowers, emojis, because I like emojis, you know. And then he comes back and he's like, well, if I knew you better, I'd send you a dozen chocolate chip cookies. And I'm like, 
oh my God, yummy. I'm like, I love cookies. You don't have to know me any better. It's totally <laughs> cool, you know? <laughs> but it's just that conversation that right. this is how I would literally talk to people. And some people I'm sure think I'm just totally whack and which is totally fine. And then, and then I find also what happens is then you get the breakdown of now we're talking, we've gone from corporate whatever to cookies and hearts and all of these things because it's, it's human, right. you know, right. it's just human. And think of the reverse of that, right? So, you know, <laughs> gosh, you're so, you're so odd. It's like, oh, thank you. Um, so the reverse of that, right? Think, think of, you know, seeing somebody and just go, oh, I reached out because you look marvelously typical. You look so similar to everybody. It really intrigued me. Like, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. <laughs> I almost want to try it. See what happens. I was looking for something unique and I couldn't find it, but I know it must be there. So I'm it's reaching spectacularly out. Spectacularly <laughs> standard. It's wonderful. <laughs> so true oh my god so awesome so awesome okay you guys we're gonna wrap up soon so if you guys have any questions that you want to ask mike um please put them either in the chat or in the q a or wherever you want to put them if you're on facebook i'll actually look and pay attention if you have questions or comments Come on is, over, because I don't want to go away. This is fun. I know, right? I'm like, I could talk for like ever. Like literally, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much, so much good stuff. Just so much. You know, uh, this this is wonderful. And, and you've filled me up today, Patty and Georgie, for, for having me on. Seriously, it's like, we can just help each other. And part of helping each other is, um, you, you know, you've poured so much into me because I feel like you care. You know, you cared enough to read the book. Thank you for that. Um, you, you, you care enough to reach out to those you see that are my friends and, and want to be, to be with them. And they're the kind of people who want to be with you also. Um, and just that, that opening up to find each other. Um, and know that we're really not alone, that um, we're, we're all misfits. And those that are playing the role really, really well, they're feeling that inside. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing I say in the book, and, and you, you probably remember reading it is, you know, we go along our, our careers in a corporate career and every time we're promoted, it's like going through a toll booth where we have to pay the toll. And that toll is a little bit of our soul. You have to become a little bit less of yourself to move through that toll and go to that next level. And then, you know, further down the road, there's that next toll booth and a little bit less of yourself and a little bit less of yourself. And it's why we see such discomfort and oftentimes anger and detachment when people reach that pinnacle because they've darkened their hearts so much along the journey that they don't even recognize themselves. Um, and how wonderful it would be that those that we will follow, that we will attach ourselves to, if, if they get to that point where many of us are moving in the same direction as them, but they didn't have to pay those tolls, that they are a full loving human being that knows it's important to take care of those around them and honor and value the relationships and allow people to have their unique talents and skills and beliefs. And actually the diversity of us is our greatest strength. Totally. So, so true. Imagine that world. Like really. I do. And I think, we're I, gonna, know. <laughs> I think we're going to get there. I do too. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> and I think it's when we each show up in our way to keep, right. We believe in the mission. We keep doing the thing. We keep holding people in that space. Yeah. It's so good. And so in our good. own way and doing it together. And so yeah. for you two to invite me along your path today um, is, is a great joy. And I really appreciate it. 
Thank you. We Thank really, you so much, really Sharon. appreciate having you here. It was really, really awesome. Yes. Um, we have a couple little little accolades for you here in the in the uh, in the chat. Um, this session was fabulous. Thanks very much, Mike, for sharing so many amazing insights. I look forward to reading your book and would love to connect on LinkedIn. Keep shining. And I feel so reinforced and inspired to go forward confidently with how I am drawn to expressing myself in the way I work with others. Thank you for sharing. I'm so glad we have that comment because that was really my hope for having you on this show would be that you would inspire you know, the amazing people that, that do come on our show and to really step into who they are and that who they are is what the world needs in the way that they do it. And it really is embracing that, that uniqueness, you know, and, and showing up like that because there are people that can only hear the message in the way that you can share it. And so when we get stuck and we want to hide and not show up like that, we're really doing a disservice to the world because the world needs you. So I'm really happy to see those comments because um, I had a feeling you would bring that out for people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and that that is a great compliment back. And, and I think um, it's important. Uh, I, I'm open to connecting and, and helping with everyone and the, you know the 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 beautiful things that have unfolded in my life in this last year and a half is a wonderful community of people that um, find each other and go build relationships. Yeah. You know there is no obligation. It's 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 a it's a tourist bus. It's you know hop on hop off. You're always welcome. No obligation. But we're all finding each other and we're building relationships that you know, strengthen each of us individually. And then we come back together and we share it to strengthen the whole. Um, and it's a model that is generative and sustainable. You know, we'll find that um, self-leadership is going to be the greatest strength. Yes. Um, that, you know, many of us are already functioning adults. We don't really need to be told what to do. Exactly. So, so, so. Make good. a lot of big decisions all on our own. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so true. Okay, I'm going to end this with one more quote from your book because I think it's fitting and I love it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have the show so I can share what I love <laughs> and people that I love. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, believe you belong. You belong through contributions, through the support of others, and through comprehending the whole. You must turn on the scoreboard, set goals, keep score, and run the clock. This is your life. So play, learn, and keep growing. I think that's such good advice. Such great advice. So, yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you um, for being here with us today. Gosh, it's my pleasure, really. And thank you again for inviting me in. I really appreciate it. And hearing words back like that, it really, it really touches me. So thank you. Yeah, great for both yes. of you. <laughs> we are too. Have an amazing day. I'm sure I will be hounding you because that's what I do. Please. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's um, awesome. fun. And I will share some links. I will share the links to your book so that people can buy the book, read the book, um, and connect with you and find out more about Humans First and what's happening there. Um, and we will just create this amazing world together. Fabulous. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. There we go. The end of episode 37. <laughs> Okay, now this is the official goodbye. <laughs> the official goodbye. <laughs> yes. See you tomorrow. Okay. Same that time.